Hey guys, so a lot of you know about the tutorial series I'm doing for how I sculpt flexi creatures and things in Nomad Sculpt. And some of you were asking about just kind of like breaking down basics of like general tools and things in Nomad Sculpt. So I'm also going to start a series of just kind of the Nomad Sculpt basics, all those tools, and then I'm going to keep the flexi series kind of dedicated to the different type of joints and movement and things like that that I utilize to create those flexi creatures using the basic tools from Nomad Sculpt. So that way you can kind of separate things. And so I'm going to go over some of those and hopefully it's helpful. Bye. So I'm going to start out with the basics of kind of what you get with Nomad Sculpt when you write when you open it and a few of the first tools that I open and address whenever I'm starting any sculpt that I think are most important. So when you start off, you're gonna get a big circle like this, and it's gonna be on a grid. You can turn that grid on or off with that little button right there that says grid. One thing that I always like to make sure if I open up this file and I don't have that little red line there, I wanna make sure I have that. That's my symmetry line. So I'll go to this little triangle up here, make sure that it's selected on world, scroll down to advanced and do show line and make sure that little box is checked. That means anything that I do to this circle, as long as this symmetry button is on, that it's going to mirror it on either side, which is super important, super great for making sure that my sculpts look clean and symmetrical and don't get kind of all wonky, different angles, different things happening that I don't want to happening. And so another basic tool is you're going to undo something tap with two fingers and with three fingers that will redo what you're doing and your movement you can see i'm just kind of pinching and zooming in and out with one finger you can rotate around hold with two fingers you can move your camera angle up and down so that's kind of how you navigate that another really important tool that is really basic is the gizmo here this is going to do a lot of different things that is all very important. So starting out, we have these arrows, which you're going to use to move your object. I'm going to go back, get it back centered. The little dots are going to stretch that object in the direction of those arrows. This orange line is going to resize your object equally all the way around, and then these blue, red, and green lines are going to rotate your object in different directions. And you see how this line here is not changing no matter which direction we move our shape? That is because our symmetry is based with the whole world map right now, which is how I like to have it a lot of times. But we can change that by going to local, and then now you see our symmetry line is where the symmetry on this actual shape is. So we turn our symmetry on, and then we can move those objects. So over here, you have your layers, your different shapes. You can hide that if you want. So let's go to Add, and we have these other shapes that we use. The shapes that I use the most common are the box, the sphere, the cylinder, and the torus. On occasion, I use the cone, but not as often. So we have our box. We're going to want to go to our gizmo, move it and then circle. So we can move it with our gizmo. Let's add a cylinder. Move that down. And our donut. Move that out of our way. And same thing with all of these shapes. Adding, stretching, moving these with the gizmo. Another important thing, especially with the torus here, you have this option up here these are going to alter that shape, the base geometry of that shape. So this I will use a lot to thicken up my donuts for body lengths and things like that. And then once you have that all how you want, you're going to validate all of your shapes before you can go in with these tools. See how my toolbar is much more limited? And then I do validate and I get all these different tools to work with. So that's kind of the very, very basics of just adding your shapes, how to manipulate, move them around, keep your world symmetrical, all of that.
So I'm going to start you off with that. And I will get more into all of these sculpting tools more in depth in the next video. But hopefully that's a good start and hopefully y'all enjoy this series. Bye.